Let us begin as we live in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate this great feast of the Most Holy Family, to receive Jesus our Lord in this Eucharist, as Mary and Joseph received him into their lives, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revow him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the death of your sins. A house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you are called into one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also 
the prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phineal of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescription of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. to grow in hope and to grow in love 
to be what Christ wants us to be in relationship with the Father. So if we look at the Holy Family, we can see those great virtues alive in their lives. Mary represents hope. Joseph represents faith. And the Christ child, love. Imagine the gift of faith Joseph must have had to take Mary and all of her holiness and humility into her, his life as the mother of God. To see as the foster father that this son who was conceived in her womb was by the Holy Spirit and would be called Emmanuel, God with us. It was that kind of faith that allowed Joseph to listen and adhere to the message of the angel, to take Mary into his home, to go to Nazareth, to have a flight into Egypt and return to be his father as he grew in wisdom and age. And of course we see Mary as the ultimate gift of hope, as a member of the Ottoman, the pious poor, waiting for salvation to come, never believing or imagining that she would be the very vehicle of hope and fulfillment for all those who waited for the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus is the perfect, obviously, the gift of love for which he is. John tells us God is love, and all love comes from God. And Jesus existed always as the Word, and he took our flesh to incarnate love for us to know. But it's Jesus' relationship with his mother and with his foster father that teaches us how to love. To be obedient to the virtues of faith and hope. There's beautiful scenes of Joseph's death where Jesus is tending to his father, as we heard in the first reading, with great love to the moment of his death. For he knew that it would take Joseph's faith to allow others to trust in the message of a mystery so great because the need was even greater. His love of his mother in and through her gift of hope as he works his first miracle at her beck and call so that all could come to believe in what hope in him that they may share not only at the banquet table in this life, but eternally in heaven. So as we celebrate this great feast, what should be our mission? Our mission should be in thanksgiving for such a model that we can follow, to pray for those virtues, the faith of Joseph, the hope of Mary, and the unconditional love of Christ, the child, who welcomes us to, into his life, offers his life, so that we may live forever. When you make your spiritual communion today, as I offer my communion for you, remember to thank God for the gift, not only of Christ, the child, but the humanness for which he beheld and shared with his mother and father. For it is faith, hope, and love that allows you to be the church. And the increase of those virtues increases the virtues and the growth of the church itself. So pray this way so that we may become stronger and that you may be an example of God's love, the faith of Joseph, and the hope of Mary. And I promise I will do the same. <clears throat> the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. In and through the intercession of the Holy Family, in the name of Jesus, the Christ child, we bring forth our prayers.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of the church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in the love of all things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of Your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary Immaculate, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Blessed Simon Peter and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory.
prayer to make a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I know that it is even more trying when we celebrate these great feasts of the Nativity and reflect on the Holy Family. I know that in this time when we are away from our family, especially at the birth of Christ, where we're used to celebrating with the Leah family, was difficult this past week. But now, too, we look to the Holy Family and know that in our own weakness as family, we need these virtues, these virtues to reach out to one another especially when we can't be there physically. And especially for those who perhaps have fallen away, who live in doubt that they may have faith. For those who live in despair, in the darkness, that they may have Mary's hope. And certainly, that they may experience the love that binds us together and the promise that is above and beyond all things, the gift. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who are divorced today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to glorify Christ by your life. Thanks be to God.